What non-wrestling fans don't understand is how dangerous professional wrestling is. Injuries are not uncommon, and one small mistake can end someone's career, as we are about to see. The story of Rick Rude is a really sad one. After roughly three years in WWE, Rick Rude joined their competitor, WCW. Unfortunately, it was here that the Ravishing One would end his in-ring career. WCW had a partnership with New Japan Pro Wrestling, which allowed wrestlers from both companies to compete on each other's shows. During one event, Rick Rude took on Sting for the WCW International World Heavyweight Championship. At one point in the match, Sting jumped over the top rope and crashed into Rick Rude on the outside. The ring was on a raised platform, and as he landed, Rude's back hit the edge of the platform. This caused a serious back injury, but somehow, Rick Rude managed to finish the match. While Rude did win, his in-ring career was over. However, Rude would continue to be part of wrestling, but in a manager-type role. Even more tragic, about five years after suffering a career-ending injury, Rick Rude would lose his life. On April 20th, 1999, Rude passed away due to a drug overdose. Christopher Nowinski got his start in WWE in an interesting way. The guy competed in the first season of the reality show Tough Enough. The show is about normal people who train to become WWE wrestlers, with the winners of the competition earning WWE contracts. While Nowinski didn't win, he would eventually sign with the company and made his debut in 2002. Unfortunately, less than a year later, Nowinski's career ended due to a tragic accident. At the 2003 Royal Rumble, Christopher Nowinski entered at number 3. A spot was planned where Rey Mysterio and Edge would hit Nowinski with missile drop kicks at the same time. However, the timing was off, and Edge landed on top of Christopher Nowinski's head. This gave Nowinski a concussion, but he continued to wrestle, which was a mistake. He began doing more damage to his body and suffered from post-concussion syndrome. Nowinski's matches started suffering because of it, and he eventually decided to end his wrestling career. Sadly, this isn't the only time Edge accidentally ended a fellow wrestler's career. Bret Hart called himself the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. While it may seem arrogant, the hitman backed up this claim every time he stepped into the ring. Hart never injured anyone he wrestled against, and actually sometimes saved his opponent from an injury, like when he was wrestling Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12. Unfortunately, one mistake abruptly ended Bret Hart's career, and it wasn't even his fault. At WCW's biggest show of the year, Starcade, the hitman took on Goldberg in the main event. In the closing moments of the match, Goldberg kicked Bret Hart in the head and accidentally hit him for real. Brett described the kick like getting hit in the head with a hockey stick. Later, Hart was examined by a doctor who said he felt a hole the size of a quarter in the back of Bret Hart's neck. The hitman didn't know the severity of the injury right away and continued wrestling. However, it didn't take long for Bret Hart to realize that he was suffering from post-concussion syndrome and he soon retired from in-ring competition. Psycho Sid, or Sid Vicious, was a monster. He was usually the biggest man anytime he was in the ring. Because of his size, Sid mainly used big power moves, and he probably should have just stick to that moveset. However, during WCW's Sin pay-per-view in 2001, people backstage pressured Sid Vicious into doing an aerial move from the middle rope. Sid wasn't comfortable doing it, but agreed to anyways, and it was a big mistake. When he hit the move, Sid landed awkwardly, and the impact caused his leg to break. Sid immediately underwent surgery and was later told he would never be able to run again. In the aftermath, Sid had to use a cane just to walk. However, Sid was determined to regain his strength, and he did. In fact, in 2012, he returned to WWE and wrestled one final match for the company. As I mentioned, Christopher Nowinski wasn't the first time Edge was involved in a career-ending injury. When the Radar Superstar made his WWE debut in 1998, he took on a man named Jose Estrada. The match had just begun, and Edge performed a suicide senton onto Estrada. However, Edge's leg came crashing down onto his opponent's head. The botched move broke Estrada's neck, and the match ended when he got counted out. While Jose would wrestle a little bit longer, his WWE career ended about a year after the injury. Sometimes, the opposite happens and wrestlers actually hurt themselves in order to save their opponent from injury. To see those incidents, watch this video.